Welcome back. Now in this next video, we're going to be continuing on from where we left off in the previous video in this series. So if you haven't seen them yet, um, check the links in the description. You can find out um, exactly where we've got so far. But in this video, we're going to be working on our notes extension. So you can see the, here's the extension that we've got so far. So in this video, we want to make it so that we can click onto the title and the um, body of the posts here and be able to actually edit these and then start to work on the JavaScript functions that will send requests to our background page, which is where we will be making all the calls to Firebase. So that'll be in the video after this, but in this video, we're going to make it so we can edit these um, elements here and send this to our um, background page. So to get started, we'll go into our code editor and everything will be where we continued off in the last video. So here is our new tab.html. So the first thing we need to do is use something called the content editable attribute. And that basically allows the user to click onto the area. So for example, this one here, and then start changing the text. So we'll add that in now and I'll show exactly what that does. So just down here where we have the title, we're going to put content editable is true. And then the same thing down here for the um, post body, content editable is true. And if we go over to our extension now and refresh, you can see we can actually select it and make changes. But you'll notice there's this horrible border around the outside, we want to remove that. So to do that, we're gonna go into our CSS at the top here. So in our CSS up here, we want to add some square um, brackets just here and then type in content editable. And then we want to make sure that we're selecting this when it's focused. So you wanna put focus like this and then just open up your CSS and say outline zero pixels solid. And for a color, we're gonna put transparent. So if we save that and go back and refresh and now select, you can see it looks like it's actually built into the page in a more sort of um, similar way to Notion. So if you use notes on Notion, you don't get this horrible border around it. You can select and type exactly where we are on the page. So we can also type into here and select these items. So if we were to put my new title, for example, that can go in like this. But what we need to do next is make sure if we remove the content from these areas that we have placeholder text so that the user isn't seeing a blank page. And we also need to make sure that if there is a placeholder there, when we are selecting and starting to type the text, it will disappear. And if we close the text, it will appear again. So as if you're working with an input box but this is just a, um, this one's an H1 element. So to do that, we're going to scroll down to our two content editables just here. And we're going to actually add a placeholder attribute with the text that we want to display. So for example, for the title, we could say untitled. And for the um, post body down here, we could say um, write your post here. So if we go back and refresh, you'll see this is just using the actual content of our page. So if we remove these two areas here, so the note title and the content of the note, and then save again. A placeholder attribute is on the page, but it's not being seen or used yet. So to do that, we need to edit our CSS. So we're gonna go back up to our CSS block over here. And then underneath our content editable focus, we need to make sure that we use this placeholder attribute that we just created so that it appears and then is hidden depending on what the user is doing. So we'll start by typing in up here like we did with content editable, we'll put placeholder. So this is selecting the element by the attribute that we're using. And then we're gonna say empty. So if our element is completely empty, we want to select this, and then we want to say before, so this is going to add content onto the page, we say content ATTR, so the attribute for placeholder. So that'll be the content that appears in this element. And then we just want to set a color. So for in this example, um, we probably need just a light, like a light gray color. So let's just put gray for now. Well, for now, we'll just put blue, actually, so we can make sure we see what's happening. We want to set an opacity here so it doesn't look too um, too much of a block color. So obviously, with placeholders, they're usually slightly lighter. So just put 0 0.5. And then we want the cursor to be type of text. 
So if we refresh and have a look, you can see we have the element appearing here. But the next thing we need to do is make sure when we click onto this box or enter anything, that this disappears. So go back into your CSS again underneath here, and then still we're gonna make a new um, square brackets underneath and target placeholder. We're gonna say empty again, like we did before, but this time we want to be on a focus element. So it's empty and it's being focused, and then we wanna access before, and then we're just gonna say content is empty. So if we refresh this now, so save and refresh, there is our placeholder. If we click onto this element and type, or if we have empty text, click onto it and then click away, we can start to actually use these like a normal placeholder. So that's how we can add the placeholder elements here, which is quite a useful way of working, not just in Chrome extensions, but across the web as well. It's a useful trick to have. So before we finish this video, I want to make sure that we can start to send um, any changes or new pages we want to create to our database. So what we need to do first is can you find the SDK information that you made when you created your Firebase app? So for me, I saved it to this file just here. So what I need to do is copy just the JavaScript part like this, and we're gonna paste that into our firebase.js file over here. So we're gonna go to our firebase.js and paste that in, and then take the other two, um, or oh, it's just one here, take this JavaScript file up here, and we're gonna paste that into our background.html page up here. And then we need to access the database as well. So if you just have a look at the link just here, see there's available libraries. If we just copy that and open it up, we need to make sure that we can actually access the database part of the extension. And then later on in the series, we're gonna be using the authentication um, part of this library as well. So just down here, you can see there's Firestore which we'll be using later on, but first we need to use the database, which you can find just here. So again, we wanna to go to our background.html and paste this underneath. Just make sure that you're using the uh, correct file name just here. So let's just double check, it should be, if we just copy that, paste it here to make sure we're using the same version. Just check that that URL exists. So that is the path that we want. So we'll get rid of this one underneath. So there is our two scripts to Firebase and then underneath we need to make sure that we include our firebase.js file in here as well. So to do that, we're just gonna say script source firebase.js. So that means our background.html page is now connected. So if we see down here, if we type in console log firebase and then open up our Chrome app. So here we have our extension here, it's all working correctly, but we've added our background page. So if we go to the extensions um, settings, find our new tab notes. So here's our new tab notes just here. And all we want to do is click on this inspect views button. If it's not there, there could be a thing where it says plus one. So just press that and then it will appear. And then that will open up the background.html page. So all we want to do is just check in the console just here and then you can see that your um, firebase.js is correctly connected and you're all linked up to your Firebase app. So if you haven't got this SDK, just check the first video in the series. I've got a link in the description and that will explain everything you need to do to create those SDK details. So just before we finish this video, we're going to add a couple of functions into our app.js. So we have our app.js over here, which currently just has our emoji um, library that we're using. So that's fine, that can stay at the bottom of the page, but up here we're going to add some functions that we're going to be using. So the first one will be to um, save any changes that we wanna to make to our notes. This will be just function save page, and this will take in a couple of parameters. So there'll be ID, title, icon, and body. So that'll be all the information that we need for our page. We also need another function, we'll put that above, to fetch notes, and that won't take in any parameters. We also need another function down here to clear a note. So if we want to create a brand new note, this will be what we use just here. And then we also need a function to change the selected note that we want to view. So we're going to call that one change page. 
and that will just take in the note ID. And then all we need after that is a function that's going to set up all of our event listeners and um, any clicks we want to listen for. So finally, just before we finish, we'll just save, make sure we save that page just there. Um, what we want to do is go into our firebase.js page as well and just set up the way that we're going to send messages to and from our extension. I'm not sure why this is appearing just here. Okay, just remove that. So what we want to use is the Chrome runtime. So that lets us send message events from our extension to our background page and so on. So to do this, you just type in Chrome runtime on message. So because this function here is in our background page, so we link to firebase.js from our background page, this is what we will be sending events to. So this is gonna essentially listen to any messages that are sent to us. So that's why we say Chrome runtime on message then we just say add listener, so we're listening for events, add listener, and then we want to make sure that we're getting a message um, object just here, sender, and then our response that we're going to send back. Let me just fix that. So like this, and then this will send back a callback just here. So what we want to be doing just here is listening for the different types of message requests that we're going to be sending through. So it will look something like this. We can say if message command equals, um, so this could be the name of our response, so it could be post, or it could be create note. This could be anything we're gonna put in just here. And then we'll just, inside here, we'll process the request. And then we'll send a callback um, using the response object just here. So in the next video, we're gonna be using these functions that we've just created. So we'll start to fill these out and send requests into our firebase.js here to use um, these different message commands to actually um, put the data into our database and then send a response back. So that'll be, we'll have a different response function over here, which will then either update and display our new information, or if we're creating a, a new page, it'll fetch the note ID and then use this um, for, our, for the displaying our new notes. That's what we'll be working on in the next video. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like, um, and if you haven't already, subscribe to find out when we upload the new videos for this series and other series that we're working on in the future as well. Thanks for watching.